All right, college algebra kids, we are going to talk about the last section in chapter four today, 4.5, which is quadratic inequalities. So this is something you probably did back in uh, algebra two. Uh, we're gonna revisit it here, and we're gonna have a specific way of doing these that we're gonna target here. To start, we're gonna talk about simply solving an inequality from a figure. If I have a graph given to you that has a function like f of x drawn on it, can I determine from the figure where is f of x greater than zero or where is f of x less than zero? Or you also might have two functions drawn together. Can I tell where f of x is greater than g of x or where f of x is less than g of x? And then also you might have to worry about greater than or equal to um, as well. So since we're talking about quadratic inequalities, just real quick, give you an idea of what we're talking about here. We're going to have a parabola that's going to be drawn on here. And let's say that's negative 1 and that's 3. Okay? If this is my function, if this is my f of x, and I ask you where is f of x greater than 0, or where is f of x less than 0, or something along those lines, you have to be able to interpret that based on my diagram, based on my picture. Okay, where is it greater than zero, greater than or equal? Where is it less than or less than or equal to zero? So what you want to do is you want to be able to think about the big picture here. When I have a function here, f of x is y, right? So where is y greater than zero is above the x-axis. Where is y less than zero is below the x-axis. And that's what I mean when I say you got to think about the big picture here. So when I ask you where is my function, my f of x greater than zero, think of f of x in terms of y as well. Where is y bigger than zero is up here, y is less than zero down here. So if I'm talking about this particular example and this particular function, and I say where is it greater than zero, if this is where y is zero, it's greater than up here, that means it's gonna be greater than up here on the left wing of my parabola, and greater than zero on the right wing of my parabola. And to express my answer, you express your answer in terms of x. My function is greater than zero when x is less than negative one, or when x is greater than three, okay? So my function is greater than zero above zero when x is less than negative one, or when x is greater than three. So when you are evaluating these, it will set up a compound inequality for you with your x terms, okay? Second one here, when I'm less than or equal to zero, well, again, if this is where my function is zero, right, and we know that it is because that's where we get these values when they're zero, I'm less than zero down here in the little dip of my parabola. So I'm less than zero when x is between negative one and three. So when x is between negative one and three is when I'm less than or equal to zero, okay? So when you have these quadratic inequalities, it's gonna set up either an or compound inequality or an and compound inequality, right? Because we remember that when I have x between these, that's just one of the ways to write an and compound inequality, okay? What if I have the second situation here? What if I have a situation where I'm comparing it to another function? Well, let's erase this and look at that. Again, if you're not ready for me to erase it, then pause the video or rewind the video, okay? But what if I have two functions drawn on the same graph and I'm comparing f to g? So let's say I've got my parabola drawn like this and that's my f of x. And then let's say I've got my other one, which is usually going to be a line, and that's my g of x. Again, you're going to know the points uh, of intersection here. Before we knew where it intersected the y-axis, because that was my zero. Here we're going to know the points where they intersect each other, because that's going to be what we're comparing it to. So let's say this is negative 3, okay, here. And let's say this is 4 here. And again, we're going to compare where is f of x greater than or equal to g of x, 
or where is f of x less than g of x, okay? I have to be able to compare the two similar to what we did when we compared just the function to the y-axis on the last example. So where is f of x greater than g of x? So look at my function f of x. Where is it greater than g of x? Where is it above g of x? Where is the value of it greater than the value of this? And again, we give our answer in terms of the x values. My function f of x is above my function g of x. Let's go to a third color here. Out here and out here. So very similar to what we were comparing on the last example with just f of x greater than zero. But now I'm just comparing it to a different function rather than the y axis or the x axis. Okay, so it's greater than g of x when x is less than or equal to negative three. Okay, that's this part that's greater than. And notice how my parabola, my f of x, is above the line, greater than the line, out here, or out here, because the right wing of the parabola is above the line as well, so when x is greater than or equal to 4, it's also bigger than that. So again, notice it still sets up a compound over quality. The second example over there, when I'm less than g of x, where is my parabola below my line? Where is f of x less than g of x? It is below it down here in the dip. And again, very similar to what we talked about before with f of x compared just to the x-axis. It's below it between these two values. Again, we express our answer in terms of x. We say f of x is less than g of x when x is between negative three and four. So when x is between negative three and four. That is when we are f of x is less than g of x. So there's kind of a connection with what's going on here. Um, whether I'm comparing my function to zero, meaning my x-axis, where is it above the x-axis or below the x-axis, or when I'm comparing my function to another function, okay? I don't know how long that part took, so let's see if we've got time to keep going here. Seven minutes, so we can keep going here, okay? Got the smart board working again, so let's see what's going on. If I actually have to solve one of these, what we just did is going to be your third and final step. But I have to get there, okay? The first thing we have to do with a quadratic inequality is we are going to have our quadratic inequality given to us. We have to solve it to find our boundary points because we know that those two boundary points, at least, uh, uh, 0, 1, or 2, I guess I should say, there's not always 2, are the points where my graph hits the x-axis, and I reminded you of that here. So my first step, if I have a quadratic inequality, like let's say I have x squared plus 7x plus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. Quadratic inequality, right? So if I have that quadratic inequality, my first step is going to be to solve the boundary equation. So we're going to say, okay, I'm going to solve the boundary equation to find the two solutions because I know that those solutions are the points where my graph will hit the x-axis. Then my second step is going to be to actually sketch the graph. It doesn't have to be perfect. We really honestly don't care where the vertex is for this application of graphing a parabola. What we really only care about is, does it open up or down? So is A positive or negative? And more importantly, well, just as important, where does it hit? Because those are gonna be my two boundary points. Once I get it sketched, we're gonna be right where we were at the beginning of this video. We're gonna have a parabola that is sketched, has two points on it, and then we're gonna go and find out where is that above zero or below zero, okay? So it's a three-step process. Step one, solve the boundary equation. The boundary equation means I take this and I solve the equation version of that just to find my two points. So I solve that, I know how to factor, so I know that's x plus three times x plus four equals zero because a basic easy trinomial when my lead coefficient is one, I need factors of 12, three and four that add to seven. Then on ZPP I get x is negative three or x is negative four, right? Step one, check. Step two, sketch the boundary equation. Step two, sketch the boundary equation. Okay, I 
guess I should say the graph of the boundary equation. So I put that in there. The graph of the boundary equation. <laughs> so I make myself a sketch real quick here. Again, the only two things that are actually really important here are which way it opens up or down and where does it hit. It hits at negative 3 and negative 4. So these are the two points where it's going to hit, right here and right here. And because A is positive, I know it opens up. I don't know how wide it is. I don't know how narrow it is. I honestly don't really care for this application, right? I just need to know it opens up and it hits at those two points. Step three, the final step, is going to be to do what we did to start this video, which is interpret the graph. Interpret the graph. What do I mean by interpret the graph? Where is it, whatever this says, greater than or equal to zero? Okay? This step is the first step where we will care at all what that says. Until this point, all I need to know is it is an inequality, so I gotta follow this process, solve the boundary equation, sketch the graph. Now I look and I actually care is it greater than zero or less than zero? Is it or equal to or not? So, where is my graph greater than or equal to zero? Over here and over here, right? Because this is my zero line. I'm greater than zero or above zero to the left of negative four, to the right of negative three, so I write that out. I am greater than or equal to zero when x is less than or equal to negative four, or when x is greater than or equal to negative three. And that's my answer. If you're asked to graph it on a number line, graph it on a number line. We've already done that, so I don't need to walk through that with you again. But that is the process. I believe this video is probably getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop it here, and then we'll finish out the lesson on a second video.